what they go do with me now I'm still a talk of the town Don't need assistance, I'm hooking them down We turn the smiles into frowns You can't hop out, then we clearing the crowd I ain't that pussy with breakfast Oh, you suck a nigga around sleep with your preference I gotta put you to bed What's up, y'all? It's your girl, Brianna Imani, and you tuned in to another Talk of the Town interview. And who do we have in the building? Cash Cobain. We got Cash Cobain, Mr. And this be from Cash, not from YouTube, YouTube. himself. Slip. And you the first interview in our new studio. So not only is this, like, very, I would say, overdue, but it's also really good to have you in the building. Thank you. So let's just get started real quick. You know, Talk of the Town dropped our XXL list. Yeah. And you were on there, so shout out to you for that. Yeah, shout out to y'all. I ain't gonna lie. But that you did fine. have some stuff to say about your cards. Oh yeah, I gave me an extra <laughs> How shoulder. How did you feel about that? I got three shoulders and shit. Not three shoulders. It was just the. It was the sweater. It wasn't you. It was the sweater. The I had hoodie was bag. mad tight. Maybe you play football in Talk of the Towns University. <laughs> How about that? <laughs> but you had like a pretty a pretty good year, and I mean you really really coming up so. I definitely want to shout out you again for Thank that. You. So, how has it been though, like this year? What has your year been like so far? This year been like it been fake crazy. I ain't gonna lie. I've been mm -hmm. outside every day. This music shit, like I can curse, right? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, this music shit been going crazy. I feel like I got the best song right now. So it's like you got the I've best song right crazy. now. What yeah. my everything? No, no, no. What? What? That's last year. So what, what's, what's the best song? Oh, of course. Okay, we're going to get we're gonna into that a little bit. Okay. So you feel like you got the best song right now. What's yeah. your plans for the summer? You dropping anything else? Um. Yeah, i probably probably drop like some Jersey shit. Okay, okay. So me personally, I was tapped into you from Welcome to Your Mixtape. Yeah. And you had like Come to Me and Parlay and those songs like yeah. My Way, yeah. Baby. Yeah, that was my shit. So how would you say has been like, what has your growth been like from back then? That was what, like 2016, 2017? That was like 2017. Yeah, yeah, so how would you say your growth has been from back then to now, 2022? Um, I feel like... I feel like it's not really my growth because I feel like I've been like, like I've been doing my thing, but it's like the time that we're in right now mm -hmm. and the way that I'm like making music now is like it goes with the time a little bit, mm -hmm. but it's still fake ahead of this of time. But mm -hmm. I definitely would say like from like what we need tape to now is different. Mm -hmm. It sounds like two completely different people. I ain't gonna lie. So what do you think changed? Um, I don't know. You don't know. Okay, <laughs> I don't that's know. fair. All right, so let's just get from, let's start from the beginning. When did you start making music? When? Mm -hmm. Um, When I was like, I think like 10, 9. Okay. I just always wanted to make music though. Like, okay. I always wanted to make beats. So were you making beats or were yeah, you I was like, making beats. okay, so you were making beats and then when did you start like actually hopping on your beats? When I was like, uh, in like 2013. Okay. I was, uh, I think I was like 15. Okay, in 2013. Okay, cool. So, when you did that, was were you following any type of influence? Was it yeah. something that you felt? Who was influencing I was on some, you? Um, I was on some Chief Keef. I was on some Chief Keef shit. Okay. But then I was, like, fucking with the auto song. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But even back then, I was sampling shit, though. Right. Because you, you the originator of the yeah. sample shit. I'm not even going to hold you. I'm definitely giving you kudos. So, wait. So, where are you from? I'm from the Bronx. You're from the Bronx. Yeah. So, how are you so heavily affiliated with Queens? I moved to Queens in, like, 2014. Okay. Mm -hmm. Moved to Queens in 2014. Yeah. And if you had to Bronx choose. nigga moved to Queens, took it over. So, you know. Ooh. That's yeah. a lot. My fault. Not my fault. So I'm what, sorry. What would you say, like, what? where do you prefer, Bronx or Queens? Oh, the Bronx. You prefer the Bronx, even though you took Queens over? Yeah. Okay, Definitely. what about the Bronx makes you? The Bronx is just, the, like, you got to be there. You got to be from there because like, I yeah. feel like everybody hate the Bronx. So yeah, like, that's what made me ask because, you know, yeah. we from Brooklyn over here. So oh, the Bronx man. is like, oh, that's automatic. We feel the no same go. way. The, the feelings <laughs> is mutual. <laughs> so um, how did you get your name, Cash Cobain? Cash Cobain. Because, like, my real name is really Cash, but mm -hmm. it's like, that's easy. Like that's that's too regular. My fault. Mm -hmm. That's too regular for like a, a rap name. So I had to add something to it. Like, and I okay. just added the Cobain. I don't know what made me do it. 
And you know what? I think it's really interesting because you don't sit here and cap like you got your name from Kurt Cobain. Like you're yeah. a big fan. I uh, feel like a lot of people would try to use that and be like, oh, yeah, I was a fan and that's how I got my name or nah. whatever. But you don't do that. But you still pay homage to him. Yeah. And you titled your album Nirvana, which I thought was yeah. really, really dope. Um, do you feel like you get the same homage paid back to you, though? Like, nah. do you feel like people give you the credit? Nah. No? Mm -mm. I'm not really. I don't really care though. I'm not. Okay, really cry, I'm not really a crybaby and shit. But well, I just be. For, I be more mad for like with other people, like for other people, like for instance, mm -hmm. like being man real. Mm -hmm. I be even mad when niggas be not paying him homage. Like he didn't really start this like Jersey rapping on Jersey Club shit. Mm -hmm. Like he really started that. So and I seen it. So I be like more mad for other people. Shout out to mm -hmm. Bam Man. Yeah, he's definitely doing his thing too. Uh, yeah. So if your friends had to describe you in three words, what words would they use? Um, right now, top five slizzy. Okay, <laughs> top five slizzy. That that's not gonna fly. But I do want to know what slizzy means because you're always saying it. That's everywhere. What what's the definition of slizzy? Man, I ain't gonna lie. I can't I can't give an answer. But well, I can tell you, I can tell you what it is. What is slizzy it? Slizzy is slizzy. Is, I can tell you what it's about. Slizzy is about being free. Right, living mm -hmm. your life the best way you can live it. Okay, so now you gotta give me two more words. Two more words. Yeah, cause top five slizzy. I feel like you tried to be slick um, there, but no. <laughs> damn slizzy. Um, what y'all describe me as? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So if the friend's not gonna say, what would you describe yourself as? If you had to give me two more words, I'm be I'm be real. I'm be like creative. Mm -hmm. um, I'm a very fun guy. So fun and um uh, shit. I'm caring. Creative, I take care fun of my people. And caring. Okay, that's dope. I love to hear that. <laughs> Cause I feel like everybody would try to say some like next shit. But that was actually really genuine, so I appreciate that. Okay, so you just talked on Band Man a little bit. Yeah. So we know you fucking with Band Man. Are there any other artists like I know he's in Jersey, but are there any New York tri state area artists that you really fucking with right now? Um, baby no liking. Shout out, baby, don't like it. I fuck mm -hmm. with Charlie. Mm -hmm. Fuck with KB. Um, I like Tata in them, though. Okay. Tata, Jen Carter, I fuck with them right now. Okay, okay. I ain't gonna lie. Shout I'm, out to them. I'm jacking Ducky B right now. Um, I, I ain't even into the politics shit, though. I like all good music. I ain't gonna lie. Mm -hmm. No, not, no, not even trying to politic with you. But just yeah. wondering where your head is at. So... I know that you and Shawnee was doing a lot of music to the, together yeah. at one point. Y'all still working together? Um, yeah. yeah. Something like that. Something like that. What that mean? <laughs> I mean, that we, we working on shit. Something like that. Okay. You know? All right. Not to say too much. All right. So, but what do you think about, like, the whole drill wave overall? Like, right now? Mm-hmm. I feel like they need to free the guys. I ain't gonna lie. They need to free K Flog and all, all them niggas. I ain't gonna lie. Because they keep taking all drill rappers away. Like, I ain't gonna lie. But the state right now, it's going good right now. Like I said, Tata them. Mm -hmm. I really jacked them right now. I ain't gonna lie. Mm -hmm. I like the state is going in. Hell yeah. Shit fine okay. right now. Do you feel like it's kind of like a ticking clock with drill? Do you feel like it's going to be around forever? Or do you feel like it's going to evolve into something else? Yeah, everything evolves. Mm -hmm. Nothing is going to be around forever. Everything mm -hmm. evolves. So it's like, I don't know when, but it's going gonna, it's gonna to change definitely. Okay. But for now, we rocking with it. Yeah. So what would you classify, though, as drill music? Um, what does it take for it to be a drill, considered a drill track? Like a real right Bronx, like a real right drill. It got to be a hard ass beat mm -hmm. with some harsh ass lyrics mm -hmm. for some young wild niggas. Harsh ass lyrics like talking about just some. You know what they be talking about. Okay, okay. <laughs> now before you caught yourself, but <laughs> I heard you say Bronx at first. Is that like I don't know? You know I'm taking a little personal because yeah. I'm from Brooklyn. But do you feel like Bronx got it? Yeah, of course. Come Bronx on. got all right, all right, all right. I'm not even going for it, Bronx. But can we give some recognition to Brooklyn? Do you fuck with any Brooklyn drill artists too? I fuck with every Brooklyn drill artist. Every book, okay. Yeah, I really, I really like the Pop Smoke. I ain't gonna lie, he really was, he really was the king of this shit. I ain't gonna lie. Mm -hmm. No kids, he like. 
Okay. And my favorite artist is from Brooklyn right now. Tasha, they from Brooklyn. Uh huh. Not from the Bronx. But Bronx got. But it you right said now. Bronx, so I felt like I just had to. I had to say something about that because I heard it. Yeah, Bronx got it right now. I ain't gonna lie. Okay. Set the tone. So. I kind of mentioned before when we were introducing you, and it's be from Cash, not, not from, from YouTube. YouTube. So, of course, I'm interested in knowing how did you get your tag? Because I know that you changed it. It wasn't yeah. all, that wasn't always your tag. So, what made you change your tag? Um, the person who said it, Big Yaya. Um, he was on. Um, I was in the studio with him, and he was on a he was on a song talking mad shit, mm-hmm. and he said that. I'm like, nah, I need that for the tag. I ain't going to lie. Mm-hmm. So I just, I just like, told the engineer, send me the acapella. And so mm-hmm. after that, she was using that ever fire. since. That shit fire. It is. I'm not going to lie. Because I feel like a song could already be fire. Yeah. But what, what the, it sets the tone exactly. for the song. It Once you hear tone. that tag, it's like, oh, shit, I you know just, this about to be some heat. You already know. You already know. So how important do you think it is, though, for a producer to have a fire tag? Very important. I ain't going to lie. Very important. Like, or at least something that. Set you apart from everybody else. Like mm-hmm. Metro booming, fire tag, like you know what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. You know that shit gonna be most of the time fire, like you know what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. My tag, you know it's gonna be fire. So, so what would you say are like the top three fire producer tags right now? Um, ATL Jacob, mm-hmm. um, my tag, and who else? Yeah. I don't know. Um, okay. Now we'll I like a hey, little fuckboy. So you know that I'll be killing shit. Some shit like that. It's a it's a producer named Fuckboy. Uh huh. I don't know why you need yourself that. Okay. <laughs> All right. That's fair enough. So, what's the deal with the YouTube beats? Cause it's very. Dis- it's not from YouTube at all. What are like? What's the difference between a Cash Cobain beat and a beat that you will find on YouTube? YouTube, that's the difference. My beats is not on YouTube, so <laughs> it's if exclusive. you got a Cash Cobain okay. beat, you got it from me. Like, you got it from me, or you got it from management. Mm-hmm. It wasn't you searching for beats and you just ran into it. Like, you know, you was getting beats by me. Mm. So you Would you know. say like there's a different type of quality of from between YouTube beats and I your mean, beats? YouTube beats is fine. Uh huh. Cool. You know, it be fire. <laughs> but my shit is just me. You just uh-huh. know when it's my beat. See, I, w- I was asking you because there are a lot of Cash Cobain type beats. Yeah, hell yeah. And I was wondering, like, what do you think about them? Because they are clearly on YouTube. Yeah. Do you think that they come close? Um, nah. Do you fuck with them? Yeah, hell yeah. I mean, that's fair. I uh, feel like nothing's really like the original. Yeah. <laughs> so it makes sense why you would say that. Okay, but how, if you had to describe your sound, how would you describe it? And I'm a, before you answer, don't say sexy. It is sexy. Don't though. say sexy because you yeah. say that all the time and I'm not jacking that. We got to come up with a new though. word. It's it not is. Sexy? I'm not going to take it away from you. It definitely is. My everything was sexy. My everything was very sexy. I mean, the beats are sexy, don't get me wrong. And it's funny that we said that about five times. So every time we say sexy, <laughs> take a shot if you're watching. But yeah. I feel like I'm ready to hear something else, not beat-wise, but I'm ready to hear another description. What what other word would you use? It's Lizzy. It's, I don't know, man. <laughs> it's a lot it's going on. I feel like other niggas' beats is bland and this. Mm-hmm. My shit is just sexy. I don't even got to do too much. Niggas yeah. be doing too much. I don't even got to really do too much. I could do some simple shit and it'd still be fire. No, that ass, because I feel like even instrumentals, it's just like you can really sit and bump those. Yeah, hell oh, yeah. No lyrics needed, no artists needed, nothing like that. At all. That's what I be doing. <laughs> okay, so when you when you credit a song that you sample, do you do you credit the artist who originally made the song or do you credit the artist that like most people know it from? So I'm going to give some clarity. So like Santana just dropped booty and everybody was talking about how it was like a beyonce sample but he really got it from like a, a group called like the chai something something like that mm. so it wasn't really a beyonce beyonce sample as much as it was the artist that beyonce sampled mm. so who do you think deserves the credit um beyonce <laughs> beyonce yeah because she made it hot she made that shit fire so is that what like First of all, do you do you clear your beats? No. Do you you don't so do you ever get scared that a beat is gonna get taken down? Nah. No. I got so much sauce, it don't even matter. 
Mm-hmm. But like when I work with artists, they be clearing it. Okay. Okay. Well, that's dope. So speaking of beats, I want to play a little game with you real quick. Oh, man. It's not. Here it's not the cr- It's no setups. It's no setups, and it's gonna be really, really quick. But I have a list of songs here, and I want you to tell me if you sampled the song, and if you did, what the name of the song was. Uh, All right. Uh, who you fooling by gonna? It's called. Yeah, I sampled it. It's called Who You Fooling, right? No. Who you think? Who yeah. you think? And you said shout out to Gunna. <laughs> I hope you don't sue me. <laughs> I thought that was funny, but I I doubt it because that shit was fire. Okay, Suffocate by Jay Holiday. Yeah, that's cool. Jay Holiday and Vicky. And I was curious to know why did you choose to sample the same song twice? Because it's like two. It was two different parts. It was, they but I thought both, that was really interesting. They both fire. Uh-huh. That's a fire song too. So it is. Yeah, hell yeah. Okay. Um, Working Me by Quavo. Working Me, nah, I ain't sampled that. Okay. Egyptian, Beautiful Lady. I definitely sampled that for sure. It's cool, Beautiful Lady. It sure was. By Cash Cobain. Okay. Cognac Queen by Meg Thee Stallion. Definitely sampled That's that. one of my favorite songs of yours, first of all. I love that song. Thank and you I feel so like much. it's so slept on, but I really, yeah. really fuck with it. Okay. A Boogie, Four Minute Convo. Yeah. Did I sample that? Yeah, right? No, no, I ain't say that. What okay, well for? maybe it's one that you that you might be sampling in the future. Hmm. I I sampled a boogie. You did four minute combo. Twenty four seven. Yeah, you. I know you sampled a boogie, but not that one. Okay, okay, okay. I'm sampling that one though. All right, <laughs> um, delirious by Vistoso Bosses. Hell yeah, yeah. I fuck with that I one too. I that. Two okay. Times. And the last one, Can You Handle It by Usher. I definitely sampled that. You definitely did sample it. What was the, what was the song called? Um, no, 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 no. Because mm, that was a, that was a little, a little throwback. Um, I don't know the score, but it's with Honest. Though. It was called Talk To You. Talk To You. And that was with Honest. Yeah. So when it comes to, like, beats that you want to sample, what do you look for in a song? Um, I don't really be looking. I just be, I know these songs. Mm-hmm. I mean... I know most of the songs I sample, or the sample will be looking for me. I just be in the car, I hear it. Uh huh. I'm, I'm, I'm back on my phone, the Shazam. Let me get this song, and I just sample it. But it gotta be sexy, you know that. Okay, the song gotta be sexy that you sample. Yes. So what? Not to say this was a genius idea of yours, but I'm just so curious. What made you sample? Back it up, back it up, back it up, back it up. What made you do that? Because Do You Have a Risk Band thing was trending, but I would never yeah, consider it to man. be sexy. <laughs> so what made you decide to sample that? Um, TikTok. My son on TikTok and stuff. Uh-huh. He keep playing that. They keep... I was with my BM and my son. They kept playing that shit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> So, I, kept that shit. I mean, but somebody did say on Twitter, oh, I think it was you that said on Twitter, like, if not me, then who? Yeah. When yeah. it came to sampling yeah. it. Yeah. Nah, because who going to sample that, though? I know. But it sounded fire. It? Like, and it made I it sample, work. And I sampled video on a beat. He posted, like, an Instagram video mm-hmm. of him, like, on the, like making a beat and shit. And he, like, he told rappers to rap on it. Mm-hmm. I just liked how he did that shit. So I just ripped that sample. And I ripped the TikTok shit. Nobody gonna do that but me. That shit was fire. I'm not even gonna look So as a producer, what would you say are some essentials to get your beats out there and recognized? Um working hard. Just keep working. I ain't gonna lie. Just mm-hmm. keep working, working, working. Work with artists. Don't be acting like you're too boozy. Don't be acting like you're too good. Don't be so money hungry. Just get in mm-hmm. and just keep working, working. Everything will pay off. Is that what you like when you were first like coming up? Were you just sending your beats out? No, no. <laughs> so it was always giving. I exclusive. created something. I created something with. I created some something with um some people. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Created something with some people. You gotta you get do a that. little more. You create. You create something with somebody, and hopefully, I both go up at the same time. So who were who would you say you were going up with? I was going up with Watchy B. Mm-hmm. I had, it, it was a couple couple artists and shit, but predominantly I was we was going crazy. Mm-hmm. Okay, okay. So how do people go about getting a Cash Cobain beat? I feel like um, tap in, pull up on me. You're that's like, it. It's not that it. It's, that's not it because it's not. 
You can't even if I know you and shit like mm. that. You like for me. So everybody's not rapping. guaranteed to get a beat if they yeah. tap in. And you just start rapping and shit. I'm not obligated to give you a beat. Right. Shit. I feel you. you. Know I mean? Has there ever been a time where somebody hopped on your beat and you were kind of like a little disappointed? Yeah, by what plenty they put of out? times. Yeah. yeah niggas, <laughs> niggas is whack. Niggas is not nice. I want to ask you so bad who. Oh, just plenty of time. I feel, uh, yeah, I, I, I know I was trying a little bit, but I was just real, real curious. There's a couple of them niggas is white. Niggas okay, is white. and then on the other side though, who do you feel like did your beat the most justice? If you had to pick somebody, um, me. All right, pick, pick, pick your top three, me. and don't, no, 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 no. We're not about to do that. Don't say you. Three other people. That did, we, that did my beats top. That did your beats justice. Justice. Yes. Um, I like um, yeah. I like Child Lee. Of course, so, Sean he definitely do his thing. Mm-hmm. Um, what else I got on there? Yeah. Huh? Now, B Love always do justice though. Like, yeah. Right? You always go crazy. Yeah, be love. Okay. Be love, Shawnee, child. Okay, so speaking of be love, of course, we know how crazy my everything went. Were you expecting that when y'all teamed up and you heard the finished product? Um, nah. No. I wasn't even... I feel like we both didn't even know. Mm-hmm. You know I mean? Because the shit leaked. Shit. Mm-hmm. It leaked, but by the, by the time it got to me... My manager sent it to me. He had like a hundred k views already. Mm-hmm. It just came out on YouTube. Up. I'm like, what the hell? And then like the next week, he sent me like a TikTok link, and it was mad TikToks. I'm like, nah, this shit going viral. Everybody was doing that shit. And that shit wasn't even out. So who do you think like made it? Le- I know you said it was leaked, and somebody yeah. sent you the video, but it's no knowledge of like who leaked it. You nah, don't know. But I know like because that's tough. Obviously, the nigga that um. Z Luddy or Zluddy from mm-hmm. TikTok, he obviously took it from YouTube and put it on TikTok, and that's the shit that went viral. But would you would you say that sometimes like leaking a song kind of helps it, or would you say it hurts it? In that case, it helped. Mm-hmm. In most in most cases, it hurt. Mm-hmm. It hurts it. You know, uh, so that song went up, of course, and then you had a Boogie and G Herbo hop on that song. Hell yeah! How did you feel about they they features? I felt. It, that was crazy, especially was like crazy. the A Boogie shit. Why? Cause y'all all from Bronx. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That, that you know, <laughs> for me, that's just crazy. That was like a moment. I ain't gonna lie. That was a moment for me. Mm-hmm. Saying like that's fire. I ain't gonna lie. So of course I'm gonna ask you if you had to choose a verse between G Herbo and A Boogie. Who would A Boogie? A Boogie. Yeah. Okay, that's fine. Shout out G Herbo. I fuck with G Herbo. Mm-hmm. That's a god. For me, I love all his music, but. Hey, Boogie. Mm-hmm. So, who are some other artists that you would like to work with? I've been saying this all day. <laughs> Tata. Okay. You know, uh, right, because I feel like that's very, like, doable. I want I want to work with... Um, Shout out to Tata. I want to work <laughs> with um, Meek Mill. Mm-hmm. Um, Travis Scott. Kanye West. Yeah, them. Okay, that's a that's a solid list, and I know um, Drake reached out for a sample. What was that like, or for a beat rather? What was that like? That was um, that's crazy. Drake is crazy. I Drake. Drake is crazy. How did that even like happen? Like how he was just tapped in? Did you know? Were you expecting that? He been tapped in, but um, Lil Yachty. I think Lil Yachty sent him like. Some songs that I produce, mm-hmm. he was like, "Nah, them just is crazy, like, mm-hmm. this is insane." Uh, tell him to me some beats, that shit. Mm-hmm. So you and Yadi are cool. Hell yeah! Really how did y'all? How did y'all meet? Um, my manager Glenn Brown, but I sent them some beats, and then I had went to the A, mm. and I was just tapped in with the bro. Mm-hmm. Hell yeah. I feel like you have a few connections, a few industry connections, which I think is really dope. You definitely mm-hmm. locked in for sure. You got cast in your bio. Free, Free cast. What was y'all relationship like? How my, did y'all meet? It's my big brother. I met him through, I met him through bro right there. Okay. My big brother. Um, yeah, that's my big brother. That's all I can say. 
That's the guy right there, free bro. Free big bro. So you say he's like, he said he was like your big brother. Do you have anybody else in the industry that you use maybe as like a mentor or somebody that you just, no? It's all you. Just Cash. He showed me a lot. Okay. I fuck with that. So what's your, what's your team looking like? Like, what you mean? Like who you working with? It's just you. You've mentioned Glenn already. It's me. Managing you. Glenn. The management team or just team period? Who you working? Who you got around you? Uh, the yeah. Slizzies. Day to day Slizzies right there. Jay Lynn. I got Baby No Lacking with me. That's my mm-hmm. artist. KB. That's my artist. Uh, you know, Glenn is, you know, Glenn always around. Mm-hmm. I got Will is the manager. Mokta is my manager. But I'll be with the Slizzies every day. Everything is Slizzy. I ain't going to lie. Mm-hmm. It's so funny you brought up Jalen because I was thinking to myself, like, two things about Cash. One thing you're going to say, no, no, no. And the other, you going to throw Jalen in the song. Uh, yeah. I'm it. like, damn, Jalen. He, he right there. He, he must be a real wing. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. So I know you, you're an artist and you're also a producer, which is really, really dope. Mm-hmm. Is there one that you feel like you prioritize over the other? Um, I prioritize making making beats, mm-hmm. but um, I like rapping. Cause like I said, niggas is whack. I feel like I'm nice. I don't want to sound arrogant or none of that. I just feel like I'm nice. I can agree with music. that. I'm not a rapper. I just like to make good music. Okay, so if a time ever came where you had to pick one, making beats, you would make beats. That's how I started. Mm-hmm. And I mean, I mean, you're equally as good, but I think that. Nah, I, I feel like making peace. I really, 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 really got a passion for making peace. Mm-hmm. Right. So if you had the choice between getting a fire art, like your top artist on a beat of yours or featuring featured in one of your songs, which one would you choose? I would do featuring on my song because, because it be you my made beat. the beat. Yeah. I knew you was going to say, I okay, let's, let's say you didn't make the beat though. Would you choose a feature or would you choose them to use your beat? I'm just choosing to make, I'm going to use my beat. Mm-hmm. Okay, okay. So, in one of your songs, you say, bacon, egg, and cheese from the poppy. From the poppy. And I want to know, like, do you prior, do you think that the poppies hold more weight than the Aki's when it comes to the store? No. No? When it comes to bacon, egg, and cheese, yeah. Okay. But everything else, because mm-hmm. I feel I like. I got it. I got it for yeah, me. Yeah, I got it. What's your what's what's your go to store order? Oh, damn! Crack spot. You ever been in the crack? The crack spot. You what's know, that? You no, know, no crack spot. I'm getting the remix. Niggas don't know about that, but like, I probably get a chopped cheese or honey turkey. Cause that's oh, the honey turkey. It's hard to find poppies in Queens. Mm-hmm. See the Bronx. I'm getting a bacon egg and cheese. But Queens. Any time of the day, you getting a bacon egg and cheese. Yeah, any time. Really? Yeah. Oh, no. Sausalito, my body. Because after a certain time, I feel like (laughs) bacon, egg, and cheese is done for. Sausalito is fire, though. It's over. I can't even tell you the last time I ordered bacon, cheese, if I'm being real. (laughs) (laughs) So, sometimes, you know, people, when they start coming up, they start getting money. They start acting different. And they start, like... Pushing away things that they were doing as while they, they were coming up. You said as they should? Yeah. Okay. So do you feel like you've pushed away certain things or you stopped doing certain things as you started coming up? Stop hanging around certain people? I stopped being stupid, I guess. How? What do you mean? You no, know, you got to move smarter when you like coming up in this world. You can't just keep doing the same shit mm-hmm. as, that you was doing when you was young. You know? So what's gotta change. So what's an example of something that you stopped doing or something that you realized that you needed to stop doing, you know, as you were coming up? Um, I don't stay damn. I don't know how to speak this. Yo. Just one thing. Let me tell you one thing. Being uh-huh. in the hood is dirt. Like, you know what I'm saying? Being in the hood is whack. Go there, do you do thing for an hour or two. Being there every day. Is whack, and I feel like a lot of artists make a point of being in the hood. Yeah, that's. I dirt. guess because they want to seem more authentic and like they really tapped in. Nah, but it's good to hear somebody say that. Being in the hood is dirt. You've been there all your life. Why you still? If you getting money and you've been in the hood all your life, why you want to go back to the hood? Mm-hmm. This shit is dirt. New York is like 
Come on, bro. Y'all want to get locked up. So I'm not trying to get locked up. So if you had to choose to live somewhere other than New York, where would you pick? I don't know. I like Atlanta. Mm-hmm. I like um, Miami. And Atlanta I like, and Miami. Nah. What you like about it is the vibes. Atlanta? Both. Because yeah. they both kind of have like a certain vibe, yeah. Miami and Atlanta. I feel like Atlanta, Atlanta's like fast, slow. Mm-hmm. You don't think Miami's fast too? Or you mean fast industry fast? Nah, like New York, we live fast out here. Uh-huh. When you go down south and shit, it's just slow. Like they slow, like Atlanta is slow, but they get fast. Uh huh. You know what I'm saying? I could do that, but I just I, I don't know. Mm. I like living in New York, but I just know gotta go. Okay. <laughs> so something else you said was I know I'm too sexy for you, but I make this stuff shit. That was Shelly. Cause I fuck with you. Okay. Yes, yeah. but it was on y'all project. Do you agree with that statement? Y'all agree that he's too sexy? No, for yourself. Because <laughs> we no, I know what I'm saying, but do you agree with the statement? And we will see why I asked that. You said, Would you make an exception for somebody that you feel like you flyer or hotter or sexier than? Yes. Yeah. 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 So what's what would you say is your type? She got to look good. You say you don't or you do? I said she like I said she got to look good. Uh huh. Um, I'm not doing no white girls. Period. Yeah, I like white black <laughs> girls. Black, maybe Spanish. Yes, I love to hear that. Honestly, because a lot of people, they start coming up in the industry. No shade to the white girls. But, like, a lot of black men start coming up in the industry, and then they just abandon the beautiful black women. Yeah. That, right. Let's talk about it. Them bitches is dirt. They don't even They don't even Man. be on fire White They don't even be no fire Like Emma Rose is alright Like Kim K is alright But like These niggas Go some regular white girl I don't know I don't know what that's about Emma Rose is mad funny The fact that She's <laughs> She's Verdean, But Amber Rose But like <laughs> I think that is mad <laughs> funny <laughs> <laughs> I mean, well, that just shows how tapped in you are to the culture, okay? Shout out to black women. Love black Jamie women Fox. from the city I've to infinity. Seen Jamie Foxx, Jamie Fox, little girlfriends, they dirt. Eddie Murphy, dirt. <laughs> oh, shit. You talking about the rich men. <laughs> Michael Jordan, dirt. Uh-huh. That's it. Like, Kanye West had the best white girl as a wife. And she's like, she's flavored because... She's not flavored. She's Armenian. I mean, it's still like, she's still white, but you know, it's... She's not You know flavored. what? It's, she's a white girl. Yes. Yeah. She's, she's yeah. definitely... Well, we that's a whole different conversation. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So, we're going we gonna to move on. So, I asked you about that line because you got a blue check. Oh, man. And I know how it gets. Once that blue check pop up on the Instagram, it's a whole different playing field. You brought up Bandman earlier, and Bandman was talking about once he got his blue check, it was like he could get anybody he want. Yeah. Did you do you agree? Have you had a similar experience after you got verified on Instagram? I just feel like I've just been moving since my whole life. That it doesn't really, <laughs> it doesn't really okay, no excuse difference. me. Like, uh-huh. ain't, you know what I'm saying? This ain't nothing new. So the blue the blue check didn't change nothing. Nah, nah, I did change it. Come on now, of course. Hell yeah. You, I've been moving slizzy my whole life. That so blue check like, add a little power. Uh-huh. But I'm just saying, <laughs> I'm saying, like, i just been moving. A lot of niggas, they, don't, they haven't been moving slizzy their whole life. Like, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And they might have been shy. They might have been squizzy. You know what I mean? I've just been moving slizzy my whole life. Mm-hmm. You know? Okay, so even outside of like when it comes to the women and stuff like that, once you got your blue check, did more doors open up for you in the industry as well? Did more people start reaching yeah, out? It, it be on you, like, mm-hmm. it be like, it's like at the same time, you just start seeing like mad shit. And I just see, me personally, I see right through it. I don't let nothing really get to me. Okay. Uh, That's good. You have to have discernment when it comes to this industry because. Yeah. Cool child. Okay. So, Too Slizzy, Too Sexy dropped this year um, with Chow Lee. Album of the which year. Which was dope. Y'all bodied that, first of all. Now, what was it about Chow Lee that made you want to do a collab album? I don't know. 
I met Charlie through Clubhouse. She was bugging. Really? Yeah, we was bugging on Clubhouse. We used to, wow. You know me, Charlie, Lonnie, and Payroll on Clubhouse during them days? Mm-hmm. You no, know, we used to be bugging like the same shit that we say in the song. We were saying in Clubhouse. We was really bugging. Like, I ain't gonna lie. Then I just met the bros in real life. Mm-hmm. And Charlie worked how I work. He got like, you know what I mean? I went from the crib. He worked from the crib. So when I go to the crib and shit, we just making music. Mm-hmm. Or even when I'm at the crib, I just send him a song. It wasn't like on no shit like, yeah, we about to make a tape. Blah, blah, blah. Oh, okay. It was just, nigga, I'm sending him a song. He sent that shit back to me like 20 minutes. Mm-hmm. He sent me a song. I sent it back in 20 minutes. Like, we were going crazy. Dumb fast, that shit. So it was like, mm-hmm. you just had, by the time, me and him probably got like 30, 40 songs right now. I ain't gonna lie. So... Wait, you got to stop? So um, I think it's very interesting that you just said that y'all met on Clubhouse because Mm -hmm. a lot of people just see Clubhouse as like it was a pandemic thing. It came and went. But a lot of people don't take time to really acknowledge like lasting relationships that really like came through Clubhouse. Uh So how and the main thing also was the networking aspect of it. So how would you say or how important would you say networking has been to your career? Networking is like. This industry is not what you know is who you know. I ain't gonna lie. Mm-hmm. But networking is like you gotta network. I ain't gonna lie. You can't act like, like I said. You can't act too cool. You can't be really too fanned out either. Like you really just gotta be yourself and just hopefully you connect with somebody. I ain't gonna lie. Mm-hmm. You know I mean? And you spoke about before like you're not obligated to give no. artists a beat. No, I was and give nobody nothing. it's not, of course, and. When somebody's coming up, you may not be as inclined to Mm-mm. send them a beat. Now, when it comes to networking, let's say somebody, like, you meet, link up with somebody at some event or something like that, and you, they really seem like they got some shit going. You fucking with them. Mm-hmm. Would you be more, is it more possible for them to get a beat out of you? Do you feel like they could use that networking opportunity to their advantage, or would it just be, like, a connection that's made? And that's it. I feel like I'm a very outside, like, I'm very outside person. Like, bro, if you outside and I'm outside, we outside, mm-hmm. and we just keep busting each other's shoulders and shit like that, it's eventually going to happen. Like, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, it don't really make no difference to me. Because okay. I got niggas, I, I got niggas hit me up right now for beats. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I still ain't sending no beats. Not on some, like, I'm just not sending them. Like, you know what I'm saying? But it's like, I'm more of a, like, catch me in the moment type of guy. Like, Okay. So the networking works for you when you connect them, but when people want to connect with you, is outside, right? Okay, real life. So going back to um, you and Chow, mm. y'all video for Jay Holiday, I think it was lit. That shit was lit, and it seemed like I really have like a genuine type I'm of to tell you, vibe the album, going on. The album is a true story. It's not mm-hmm. fake. We're not just you know how niggas just be rapping like yeah. Like, say it was drill rapper, he dad pussy, but he rapping all this yeah. real shit. I nah, none you of really that. what we you really rap about. What's facts. going on in these streets? Like, Chow Crib is really vacant. Like, I ain't going on. <laughs> that ass, though, like. <laughs> and one thing that did it for me was the ad libs. The yep. ad libs on the video were mad funny. Was that, like, whose idea was it to add the ad libs to the video? I don't know. Oh, I well, just be, like, I saying, fucked I, with I like it. saying that. I'm just like, yep. I said, Charlie, shit, that shit fire. Oh, you know what? I said ad libs, and that wasn't even what I meant to say. I meant to say the oh, caption. The yeah, the subtitles. I think that was Charlie. Those was fire. Hell yeah. The random dancing one got me because I used to be an iCarly fan. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, oh, shout outs to y'all for including yeah. that. But that was really a vibe. Do you like That's making fun. music videos? It's cool. It's a vibe. It's fun. It'd be drunk. It'd be females. It'd be mm-hmm. vibey. Do you feel like it helps push the song or. Uh, I guess it do. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because you could go viral. Right. Do you feel like J Holiday Vacant is viral material? Um, it's, it's it's a fire video. It is. It's a fire song. It's not really, you know what I'm saying? Okay. I feel like the freestyle, freestyle was fire. Like, mm-hmm. on, on the radar, so it was fire. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was. Shout out to Gabe on the radar. So, in addition to Too Slizzy, Too Sexy, you also dropped Slizzy Time in this year. Yeah. How was that received? It was good. Man. All right. You know, I just had to drop something. I just felt like I had to change. I had to let people know that it was Slizzy timing. That's why I dropped it in, mm-hmm. on New Year's because it's about to be a new Slizzy outside. 
Okay, yeah, a couple months later, too sexy, too sexy. What's what's the new Slizzy? Oh, you oh you're talking about too sexy, too sexy. No, no, no. The new. So the there is a new. There's slizzy a new Slizzy. Tommy. Everything is Slizzy. Everybody uh-huh. moving Slizzy. Everybody over there. Every, the is Slizzy is slizzy. getting me caught up. I'm sorry. Everything is Slizzy. Okay. All right. This year. So if you had to make, cause you say it's Slizzy so much, yes. and I know it's something else that you won't bigger disclose than you to us. But if you had to name your fan base. What would you name them? Oh, the Slizzies, for sure. Okay, see, I wasn't sure if you was going to say that. I was thinking that. This is a nation. We're going to call them the Slizzy Nation. Okay, Slizzy Nation. I don't Mm -hmm. know if, is this a, you heard it here first or you already said that? You heard it here first. You heard it here first, y'all. Slizzy Nation. Okay, so do you ever search your name on social media? Twitter. I know, and I was hoping that you said that because you're not really active on Twitter outside of your retweets. Yeah. I just be posting what people say about me. You don't fuck with Twitter like that? I don't really get it. Like, and you can't say it. I'm a creep, like you know what I'm saying. You <laughs> no. can't like you can't like stuff on Twitter. It's gonna show up. It do. On everybody knows you can't follow nobody. You can't do nothing. So okay, I'm that's fair. Keep my mouth shut and repost. And what do people usually? Well, I see what people say, but is it ever surprising to you what people say when it comes to you on Twitter? Yeah, yeah, because I don't know. I really don't know none of these people from all in the world. And it's crazy. I, Facebook. I don't get no love on Facebook. And I know everybody on my Facebook. Mm. That's the worst app. I don't even think I'm cast with being on Facebook. I ain't gonna lie. Now, do you think that's because of just like nobody is on Facebook like that anymore, or nah, do you think I got that's more on of Facebook? Okay, so they must be sleeping under a rock. Who? The people. Oh, on the Facebook. people on your Facebook. Now, what I want to ask you though is, have you found that the most support that you get is from people that you don't know? Yeah. Why do you think that is? I really don't know. <laughs> Because I feel like that's something that a lot of people say, like, as they go up, the people who they really expect to be around. Yeah, I don't know. I think people think they're too cool. People don't want to seem like dick riders until it's too late. I go rival. Mm -hmm. Now everybody want to act like they knew me Mm -hmm. and they been bumping my music. And don't get me wrong, like, it be people that really been bumping your music that you would never know. Like, they would never support none of that. I done had mad girls, like, for me, like... (laughs) Sent me shit from three years ago. Mm. Like, damn, yeah, I never even knew he was bumping my music. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but watch when that Drake track come out. <laughs> yeah, it's over now. <laughs> uh huh. So you really doing your thing though. You know, you I'm artist. Hard. You producing, making your beats, and you also EP, right? Huh? You not EP in the album? Oh or yeah, project? yeah. Oh, I mean, you have me doing come- my thing. Okay. So what is it like? You trying to take over? All together. I love this music shit. Mm-hmm. I love this music shit. So it's like, people come to me too. I ain't gonna lie. I got a nice ear, I guess. Mm-hmm. But people be coming to me. So it's like. Is that something that you would do, like, continuously moving forward? Yeah. yeah? I would love to EP. Like, I'm about to EP Baby No Lacking Project. Mm-hmm. I did 2219 Project. I just did um, the MHPD Sound Project. But, like, say, like. Artists like B Love or Dougie, Dougie B. Mm-hmm. I would love to executive producer shit. Because I know, like, for me, mm-hmm. I know what the people want to hear. Type shit. So, for the people that don't know, real quick, can you explain the difference between being an EP on a project and producing? Like, a producing, producing is like making the beats and shit like that. Mm-hmm. I don't have to make, I don't have to produce a beat to be an executive producer. It's, it's like, it's sort of like what Diddy did for Biggie, you know what I'm saying? Right. I'm picking the songs. I'm, I'm picking like the way this shit gonna be structured. I'm help. I'm not picking it, but I'm helping you do it. I'm helping you. I'm helping you make the song. I'm helping you create the vibe for the album. I'm helping you, and which direction you want to go. Like you know what I'm saying? Like mm-hmm. it's more like a hands on, like helping somebody. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Okay. It's not really making no beats, really. Okay, okay, okay. So, interesting. I'm making executive decisions. That's why I was called executive. Yes. Cash Cobain, the big exec. Yes. So, I'm interested to know, like, what's next? We halfway through the year at this point, so we got another six months left. Yeah. What can we look forward to? I'm just going to keep going crazy. I ain't going to lie. Um, too sexy, too sexy, deluxe. I don't know if I'm ready for that, but it's definitely going to come. I already I'm know definitely, what I definitely want to try. Two more projects. Mm-hmm. We got the Sizzies. I got like, my artist, G Baby. Like I said, G Baby, KB. They coming strong. Be on the lookout for them because they crazy. I'm okay. executive producing. They shit. Uh-huh. So you know it's going to be fire. 
Any sneaky collabs you got coming definitely out? Definitely sneaky collabs. Ooh. Definitely sneaky collabs. Mainstream, upcoming? Mainstream and upcoming. Ooh. And that's going to be under the deluxe? For sure. Or um, just Some will be under the deluxe. Oh, I'm come. excited. Some I've been had in the cut. You know what I'm saying? Okay. You know what I'm saying? It's just going to go crazy this whole year. I ain't going to lie. All right. Well, definitely looking forward to it. Now, is there anything else that you want to... Touch on or anybody you want to shout out before we wrap this up? Shout out to all the Slizzies. Shout out to all the Slizzy and the Slizzettes. <laughs> <laughs> Slizzy and the Slizzettes. Shout out everybody. Fuck with me. If you fuck with me, I fuck with you. Okay. Um, shout out all the guys. You know, Mama Love, I love you. you yes, right? of course. You got to shout Mama out. Little baby love that. Woody, you know. All right, so. Shout out Talk of the Town. Shout out. Shout out everybody. I ain't gonna lie. I'm a good person. I'm in a, I'm in a different space of life right now. You know? I'm in a good place. I'm just happy. I'm having fun with my life. I know? love that for you. Okay. So shout out your socials. Oh, Cash. So follow me on the gram. Cash Cobain underscore two X. On Twitter, Cash Cobain underscore two X. Um. Yeah, that's it. All right, y'all. Subscribe so- to my YouTube. Sissy Entertainment. Out of here. <laughs>